This is the Rodecaster Duo. It's the little brother to the Rodecaster Pro 2, but it's a powerful two-channel audio interface that can run all the way up to a Shure SM7B. You can record directly to a micro SD card within the audio interface, and you can connect two microphones and two pairs of headphones, and you can even record high-quality video and audio with remote guests using Riverside and the Rodecaster Duo seamlessly. We're gonna jump into the Rodecaster Duo settings to make sure it works perfectly with Riverside so you can hear remote guests and you have a clean recording on your audio channels, and how to set up multiple microphones with the Rodecaster Duo to make sure you get the best sound possible. Now the Rodecaster Duo has two physical microphone inputs, plus it has a small media board where you can upload sounds and play those, and two headphone volume knobs. On the back you have the on button and connecting it to power. You can also connect it to ethernet if you want to be able to access it over the network, but it also connects to Wi-Fi as well. There's a micro SD card slot so you can record both channels locally, and it has two USB ports for connecting to your computer for different use cases. We'll go over that in a second two headphone ports for you and an in-person guest, plus monitor outs, and here are the two XLR ports for connecting your microphones. To get started, in the box we're gonna connect the power cord, and also gonna use the USB-C cable that was included in the box, plug it into the USB-1 port right here, and we'll turn it on. And we'll take the other end of the USB-C cable and plug it into our computer. Finally, you'll wanna connect a pair of wired headphones here I'm gonna connect headphones to the headphone one port right there. And if you have another in-person or in-studio guest, plug in their headphones to headphone number two. Now you might have a firmware update when you first boot up the Rodecaster Duo. And to do that, you can go to the settings right here on the touch screen, go to system, and you can connect it to a Wi-Fi network right here, or again, you can plug in an ethernet cable to the back. Once it's connected to the internet, you can go to the information tab and then check for updates here. Once we're up to date, we're ready to set up our microphones. Let's set up two in-person microphones. We'll do the Shure MV7 and the ATR2100X. I'll plug the Shure MV7 into microphone one, the host microphone, and if you have another in-person guest, we'll plug them into mic two. Now, once you've plugged in your microphones, it's important to tell the Rodecaster Duo the kinds of microphones so it knows how much gain or volume to give each. If I hit the large square above each channel, this is channel one right here, I'll go in, and this is the Shure MV7. Now it doesn't have my particular model, although if you have the pod mic or even the Shure SM7B that has its own preset right here, but I know this is a dynamic microphone and so I'll go over and choose dynamic. The Rodecaster Duo also has some effects that it applies to each channel, but to get the best raw recording, I turn processing off for every microphone input. Now you'll wanna talk in the microphone and make sure the volume level is appropriate. You wanna make sure when you're talking directly into the mic that it's getting into the yellow, but not hitting the red just yet. I might increase it a couple dB, and this is probably the appropriate volume you want for the Shure MV7. If you have a condenser microphone, you can turn on phantom power right here next to the P48. I'll go to mic channel two. I know this is also a dynamic microphone, and I'm talking into the microphone. The levels look pretty good. It's in that green area right there. I'll turn off processing, and now my microphones are set up. Now I can adjust the volume of the microphones using the faders, but there's actually a better way to do that because I wanna make sure my recorded volume is always consistent and the same when I'm recording with Riverside. To adjust those settings, I'm gonna download the Rode Central software. We'll put a link to that down in the description so you can grab that quickly. And once it's installed and we connect our Rodecaster to the computer, you'll see it show up here in the left-hand sidebar. If I want to add sounds to those smart patches, I can do that here. But I'm gonna go over to Audio Setup here you'll have some similar settings as we did on the physical Rodecaster device. You'll see a similar interface if I go into each microphone settings with the gain level, processing, effects, and more. It will save our settings so we don't have to change them again here in the software. You'll see channel three is to connect Bluetooth devices like a mobile device, and the sound effects is channel four. Since we've already adjusted our microphone settings, I don't need to do anything else here, but I'll go over to device configuration. Here I can adjust the brightness of the display, I can change how metering appears, and choose how I want the record button to function when I'm recording to a micro SD card. You can also go over to system and adjust MIDI control and other information, but where you really need to adjust some settings is in the output section. Here in outputs, you can choose the kind of headphones you've connected to the Rodecaster Duo. If you have a pair of over-the-ear headphones, you can choose this, high sensitivity like small earbuds, choose this option. I have the 250 ohm version and they require more volume or more power to make sure I hear things properly. For that I would choose a low sensitivity setting. But I connected some earbuds so I'll choose high sensitivity here. If we go to monitor, I don't have any physical monitors connected to my audio interface so I can skip that and go down to routing. This is where you really need to adjust the settings properly to make sure it's recording in Riverside. Here you can adjust the volume level of each input and USB for the headphones. I'm gonna go over to custom 
And if you have two microphones connected and you want to be able to hear both in-person guests, then make sure both of these volume sliders are up. You also want to make sure the USB volume is up because we're going to select the Rodecaster Duo as our audio input and speaker output in Riverside. So to hear those remote guests through Riverside, you need to have the USB volume up in the headphone section. You can do the same for your second pair of headphones. Again, we don't have physical monitors attached to the device, so we can go to the record button. And here I also wanted to record all channels, including the USB input from Riverside. We don't have Bluetooth devices connected, but if you go to the USB one settings, these are the critical settings for recording with Riverside. The mix minus option is the ideal setting for recording with Riverside. That means the audio that you're getting from USB to the Rodecaster Duo, namely your remote guests, won't be fed back to them so they hear an echo. The mix minus option should be all you need to choose for the Rodecaster Duo. If you wanna really granularly control the USB audio, go to custom and you wanna make sure all of these are turned down. This is important because your track in Riverside will also record whatever channels are raised under the custom section. If the USB audio was raised in the USB output, then my Riverside recording is going to have my remote guests in my audio track. No good, you don't want that. So if you go over to custom for the USB one, Turn everything down except for any in-person microphones. Now, if you're solo recording with the Rodecaster Duo, you could turn channel two all the way down. Then you can make sure only the one microphone will be recorded in Riverside. If you're recording with two people in person, you can keep both of these raised, but keep in mind Riverside will combine both of those audio tracks into one audio track. So you'll need to record directly to the Rodecaster Duo in addition to Riverside, to get those separate tracks for in-person guests. If you wanna learn more about hybrid recording and recording with in-person and remote guests at the same time, I have an entire video walking through that process. You can check it out above or the link is in the description. Let's assume I'm recording solo and so I'm gonna turn even microphone two down and just leave one up in the USB settings. Finally, we'll go over to listen. We don't have to change anything here. For multi-track recording, if we go over to the USB settings, I prefer to choose pre-fader. This means that whatever the gain or volume that I've set for each microphone input, that's what will be recorded in Riverside. So regardless of where I put these faders on the actual board, I know my volume will be consistent from that USB output. And while we've already turned processing off, I can choose to bypass all processing here just to be doubly sure that no effects will be applied to my audio. Instead, I could choose post fader, and if I do that, then these faders will affect the volume of my recording in Riverside. If you were recording with multiple guests in person, you might wanna choose post fader. This way you can mix that audio live. If someone gets a little louder during the recording, you might wanna turn them down and so forth. But again, for solo recording or for just the most consistent audio recordings, I would choose pre fader under the multi-track. Those are all the settings we need to adjust here in the Rodecaster Duo software. Now we can log into our Riverside account, go to the studio where we need to record, and then click go to studio. Here in Riverside, I can actually choose my iPhone as my webcam with continuity camera, if you wanna learn more about that, I have a video. You can check it out above or the link is in the description. And then here under microphone, you'll see two options for the Rodecaster Duo. The Rodecaster Duo Chat, which is that second USB output, but we adjusted settings for the main multi-track Rodecaster Duo. So that's what we wanna select as our audio input, Rodecaster Duo main multi-track. And we're also going to select that as our audio output. Here, the Rodecaster Duo main multi-track as our speaker output. You'll see this warning just to make sure you have all the settings properly for your Rodecaster Duo. We can X out of that. I am using headphones and now let's join the studio. Now that we're here in the Riverside studio, if I talk into the Shure MV7, which was in channel one of our Rodecaster Duo, we should see the volume of this microphone going up and down on the right-hand sidebar in Riverside. That means we're good to go. Now, if you remember, we turned down microphone two in the Rode Central software. And so you see there's no audio going up and down when I'm talking into this microphone. If we went back to Rode Central and I turned up the microphone two input in the custom mix for USB one, now you'll see that the audio is going up and down in microphone two and in the microphone channel one. But remember, both of these microphones will appear in the same track in Riverside if you choose to leave them both volume up. But now that I have everything connected, I'll be hearing my remote guest through the headphones I connected to the Rodecaster Duo. I have my iPhone here in continuity camera and I'm ready to record my video content with Riverside. And that's how to connect and use the Rodecaster Duo to record high quality video and audio content using Riverside. If you have any questions about this setup, leave a comment below this video. I answer all of those personally. And if you wanna learn more about that hybrid recording, you have both in-person and remote guests that you wanna record with Riverside, you can check out our video above where I explain it step by step. And if you wanna start a video podcast, but you're not sure where to begin, I have an entire walkthrough going step by step, connecting the microphones and cameras to your computer. 
recording with Riverside, and even publishing that video podcast. You can check out that walkthrough above here. And before you go, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We have great content coming with more gear and equipment tutorials or how to produce high quality video content with Riverside. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.